Welcome everyone and good afternoon. So uh, for those of you who are new to uh, the Alzheimer group or AGI, um, my name is Mary Vick Aplaon and I'm one of the counselors here. Um, AGI, I wanna tell you a little bit something about our organization. So we are not for profit. We are a charitable organization that supports families and individuals living with dementia. Our services include individual and family counseling, support groups, activities for people living with dementia and educational courses and workshops. So lectures such as this one are made possible by the generous support of the Lastner Learning Center and Lenze Memorial Foundation. So ladies and gentlemen, we are very lucky and fortunate this afternoon to have Officer Mark Berthiom, did I say it right, sir? <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, and in French, it's Berthiom. There's a bit of an accent, but uh, you said it well in English. Yeah. yeah, I said it well. And also, I'll practice my French next time. So, uh -huh. so Officer Berthiom is he is a socio community officer, and uh, would AGI would really like to extend our gratitude for taking this time to actually um, give the presentation about fraud and everything. So before we begin, ladies and gentlemen, I will mention to the audience to please write your questions on the Q&A button that you see at the bottom of your screen, and we will try to address them after the presentation. Um, so anyway, I will hand it over to Officer Bertium. So this, the floor is yours, sir. Thank you very much. You're welcome. So, hi, everyone. I hope you're doing well today. So the objective of today's uh, meeting together is to talk about fraud prevention tips to help you out, uh, because as we know, there's a lot of scammers. There's a lot of uh, pretty uh, clever techniques that they use nowadays to try to lure people in to take your money. And the number one thing we want to make sure happens is that you keep your money and no criminal takes it from you. So I'm going to start off by talking a bit about myself. So my name is uh, Marc Bertillon, and I'm a community resource police officer or agent sociocom in French. And uh, what a community resource officer does is we do prevention work. So we don't answer 911 calls. We do uh, prevention oriented campaigns. We do kiosks. We actually did one on the June 15th at the Cavendish Mall. We had invited a couple of people uh, to participate with us that are community uh, organizations. And our objective is to help the elderly people uh, have the safest and most resources and help available to them if they want it. So things are free, like today it's a free reunion, everything is free. And we just wanna help uh, our beloved elderly out there to make them know that they're not alone and we're here to uh, help you and be there for you, okay? So now I'm going to discuss about uh, some fraud techniques, okay, that these suspects use. And you have to keep in mind that there's going to be uh, all kinds of various methods. So there's going to be in-person methods where you meet people. There's going to be methods on the telephone. And there's also going to be uh, methods by internet, by emails sometimes by text messages on your cell phone. So there's all kinds of different methods and they're all frauds, okay? So the number one rule of thumb is you just have to remember that you never give your money, never. You only give it to people you know and that you trust. That's it, that's all, nothing more. So that's the number one rule. And if you keep this rule in mind all the time, you're gonna be safe. But I will explain to you some scenarios that we see that are the most common in order to help you detect it beforehand as well. So there's one, it's called the jewelry theft. Now, what happens is the suspects sometimes can be alone, but sometimes they work on as a team. And what happens is that you'll, you'll be walking anywhere on the streets, uh, doing your groceries or doing your shopping in the mall and they're going to meet you and tell you that they like your jewelry or they'll try to distract you and say anything 
but these are strangers, right? So we encourage you to not talk to them. But these strangers, they're gonna try to invent a story that they need help or that uh, they like your jewelry or they like something about you or they might ask you a question, anything to grab your you know, uh, look uh, from you. And then when there's teams involved, they'll try to pickpocket you from your purse or money that you're holding in your hand or anything that has a value like a watch or a ring. So just make sure that you don't talk to these people at all. And the, the way that they operate is it's so quick that you never see it coming and it's gonna be difficult for you to prevent them from taking that money from you. So the number one thing that we tell people in these cases is make sure to only wear your jewelry and your valuables in special occasions around people you know and you trust and not just to wear them every single day. And as much as possible, if you can be with someone and not be alone, so that there'll be other people to help you during these moments, so that you're less uh, exposed to have these people wanting to be around you to try to scam you. It doesn't happen super often, but it's important you know that this exists. And we do get some people reporting these crimes uh, to us, okay? So that first one was called the jewelry theft scenario. So another scenario, it's called the contractor, okay? Now, the contractor is gonna be, again, somebody pretending to work for a construction of any type. It could be uh, somebody wanting to help you fix your gutter or change your gutter or install a brand new pool or fix your driveway. It could be anything, okay? And uh, the way it works is uh, they're gonna knock on your door. They're gonna present themselves and tell you that uh, they can do work uh, to renovate anything. Or let's say there's a flood in your house and uh, you need to like clean uh, the flood or whatever, or to change uh, the ceiling they're going to want to do this work for you and propose you to do it. And we, again, we suggest people to not accept this, okay? Refuse them. And if you want someone, again, try to call somebody you know or try to uh, have a family member if you can to help you. And if you want to make sure, you can call us at 911 to make sure that this guy is not scamming you, okay? But what they're going to do is they're going to pretend that they can do the work for you. They're going to give you an estimation. They're going to tell you that it costs X thousands amounts of dollars, but they will be asking you for a deposit. And what happens is if you give them that deposit money, they will never come to do the work. They take your money, they fly away, and you'll never see them again. So this is what we call the contractor fraud. So we tell people to just make sure that you know the company that you're able to contact them yourselves or call us to validate because these people, it does exist that we get, again, these files of people saying all kinds of crazy stories that seem very true, that might be possible, but at the end of the day, they just want to take your money. So again, watch out for these scams. Then there's a bit more popular ones. So you'll get anything by text message on your cell phone. So let's say on your cell phone, you get a, a message. It's from somebody you don't know. It's an unknown number. And they're asking you that example, the government is sending you uh, uh, funds. Please click on the, the, the link uh, to accept. Or example, it could be Netflix. Netflix saying, oh, you haven't paid your, your account. Click on the link to be able to make the payment. So it could be any, anything like this where it's saying they're either wanting to give you money or asking you for a payment. So all these are frauds. Never click on the links and never give money because what happens is, you're, again, you're never going to see that money again. And these people, uh, you don't know them. They're just random messages that they uh, try to send to people to catch victims. And the term we use for this is called phishing. 
So it's not like fishing when you go uh, fishing for fish, but it ends up being that for them, but it's spelled with a H. So it's F-H-I-S-I-N-G, okay? So uh, they're trying to fish you almost like a fishing rod to get your money and they'll do anything to get it. And they love to use these scare tactics. They love to use sometimes pressure, but never uh, accept this. As soon as something feels wrong, it feels pressured, it doesn't feel natural and it doesn't feel good, you never do it. And of course, like I said, the number one tip all the time, never give it to strangers that you don't know, especially when you don't see them. Like here, we're talking about text messages or uh, telephone. You, don't, you only hear a voice. And some of these suspects, what they use either internet or telephones, most of them don't even live in the area. They live in other countries around the world. Sometimes we find them in Belgium, we find them in um, Ivory Coast, in uh, some African countries, in Egypt, all over the world, okay? Anywhere you think, you will see that uh, when we get the foul, we do investigation and they're hard to catch because since they're across the world, it becomes complicated to get uh, international transferred for them to be prosecuted in Canada. So all these things, just block them or don't answer them, okay? Uh, and another one regarding phones, it could be calls on your cell phone or on your home line, and it's called the grandparent scam. What this is, is it's somebody that's going to call you pretending that they know you or that they're your grandson or uh, granddaughter. And they're going to be saying that they're in danger, that uh, they want your help, that they need money because they got arrested or uh, their cat is sick or their animal is sick or their car broke down and they need emergency payments to fix the car. And they try to get you with your emotions to get the money. So they are, again, they do all kinds of crazy tactics hoping to get your money to convince you to give it to them but never set in never give it okay and this uh, scenario uh, it's the most uh, occurring one is the fact that they're wanting you to say their name saying hey uh, grandma uh, it's it's your grandson or it's your granddaughter and then often the the people that are victims end up saying the name Example, you say, uh, hey, it's George, and then they jump on this opportunity and they pretend to be your grandson, George. And then they'll say, yeah, it's me, George. Uh, you know, I'm in uh, the hospital. I need uh, some money. Uh, can you help me? Or whatever kind of situation that we just talked. And then you give the money to them. Okay, so all these kinds of things uh, just hang up. Okay, number one, you hang up, you don't know them. If you know them and it's real family members, they will meet you in person. There'll be a way for them to get help. They're adults, they're big enough people and they'll figure it out by themselves without asking you by the phone, okay? So the number one thing we suggest you to do, you hang up. And again, if you want, you can always validate by calling us at the police station. And there you'll be able to have validation if you're unsure and we're gonna give you all the help you need to make the right decision. And the decision, uh, if you need some advice, we're always available, okay? We're a 24 hour day, seven day a week service, every single day of the year. And you can ask us anytime, there's no problem. Another one that's pretty popular, is gonna be emails. So you might also get emails through your email account and it's called the spam mail, okay? Now, the spam mail, what happens is, again, it's going to resemble some text messages in some of these telephone uh, verbal conversations, but it's by written email. So some of them that we see, it's going to be uh, saying, again, Netflix or your Amazon uh, Prime membership is uh, going to be canceled because you forgot to do a payment and make the payment now to keep your membership active. Well, then again, this is other indications of fraud and you don't give the money. 
if you're due to make a payment, you call yourself Amazon, you call yourself Netflix or whatever company, and you validate by telephone, okay? But through the real number, don't use the number they send you in the email because you'll be calling the fraud guy, okay? So make sure you call the proper Netflix number that you get from the Netflix official internet website. And the same thing with the official Amazon website. So you have the proper number, okay? And then you can validate this. But as well, if you're really witty and you're alert, you're gonna be able to see it in the emails that the phone numbers don't match, the addresses don't match. and But they're pretty good in sometimes matching the logos. It's the good logo. So that's how they try to convince people that it's really Netflix or Amazon with the logos. And sometimes you can also see on the internet uh, uh, email link that uh, their email uh, is not an official uh, Netflix or Amazon because it doesn't uh, fit with the companies. But those are more uh, advanced tips. Uh, but just globally, uh, always confirm, okay? A lot of people use these tactics to scare you, to say you don't do your payments, that you owe people money or they need your money, okay? Never, never give. And another email tactic they use besides saying that you're missing your payments, again, it's going to be similar stuff like um, uh, by email that your grandson needs uh, money or somebody uh, has a warrant of arrest against you. Like we get on the telephone saying that if you do not uh, pay your uh, income taxes, that is a warrant of arrest for you uh, and you have to make the payment now to avoid having the police uh, bring you to jail. <laughs> All of this, more, more tactics to scare you, to pressure you, to get your money and they're false. We know the police, we would never do this. The government, we would never do this. If there's something, the government would meet you and knock at the door, show ID and be able to prove who they are. Same with us, the police with our uniforms, we could prove who we are. And always ask questions if you're unsure. And if you're not satisfied on how they identify themselves, just refuse. You have the power and the right to do so and we recommend you to refuse but to go back with this email okay so it's going to say uh, that they're going to come and knock on your door and get you uh, if you don't do the payment you just flush it so the solution you just block it you flush it but the thing is there's so many and it's a repetitive cycle that's hard to get that you're going to have to just keep in mind that it might reoccur in other similar fashion but every time you need to email flush, email flush, and delete these ones out so that you don't uh, entertain them and uh, get into exchanges with them. This, uh, because as soon as you start exchanging, that's where they're gonna see that there's potential in you and they might add even more uh, lies and lies to try to, to get your bank account or your credit card numbers or anything that's related to access to your bank or investments or your money. The, the other one that's uh, being reoccurring, it's called the credit card theft, okay? So what that is, is while you're shopping around or you're just walking around, so in your purse now, there's these technology uh, uh, that it's almost like a cell phone that they keep in their pocket and they walk by you and they're able with the Bluetooth or the, the radio waves that are emitted from the phone or your credit card, because everything has chips and everything is technology based. And they're able to detect your NIP number or your credit card information, okay? So that is very alarming. And, uh, it's, you, and you don't even know what happened because they just walk by you, they don't talk to you, you could be uh, putting gas in your car and they walk by you or you're at the grocery sh uh, store buying your vegetables and your fruits and they'll walk by you and you'll never know it. But with this machine, they're able to clone your uh, card information. 
So there, we give out little sleeves at the, here at the station, but they also sell them in stores. It's anything that is a card holder that has, um, it's an aluminum foil that's inside, which protects from the radio signals to be sent outward. And it protects your card to keep your information safe. So we give some free here at the station. So if you do show up at any police station, we'll be able to give you some. Uh, on the kiosk today, when we did one at the Cavendish Mall, we had some and we gave them out to the people that showed up. Uh, when we do presentations in person, we also bring some and hand some out. Uh, so there is a way to get some from us. And also in the stores, there's ways for you to buy them. I know that I think Walmart sells some or some, um, Let's say uh, if you're traveling and you're buying your suitcases, there's places where they sell suitcases that also have protection because uh, there's also protections that are uh, being sold there for your passports because now the passports also have little chips in them and those sometimes get cloned as well. And it's good to, to have those uh, protective uh, kind of a passport wallet to save uh, your, your passport. But they also sell wallets with this technology that you don't necessarily need the cars, a card sleeve. You can just put it in your wallet and it saves you. And I'm gonna try to find you uh, this logo, okay? That is good when you make these purchases of either the wallet or the credit card. I don't know if I'll be able to show you. This logo. So, how does this work with the Zoom? So, oh, you know what? Let's see my camera. I can point it. Okay. So it's called. It's called here. It's called RFID. It's, it's see that it means that it protects you from the radio waves uh, of your card. And they also, when you see this logo, all the time you're good to go. These products are certified. They'll protect your passports. They'll protect uh, your credit cards. So anything that they'll be able to uh, clone from you. Okay. And uh, I have them myself. You know, I use it myself uh, for my uh, personal cards. I have one for my passport for when I travel. So it's uh, super uh, important that you look for this logo because it confirms that your safety of your information will be protected. And uh, yeah, so these are, uh, guys then, they do transactions with your cards. You won't even know it. And then when you look at your bank account statement, there's gonna be all kinds of transactions that you never made that are under your name. And what's a bit sad is the most uh, elderly people don't always check their bank accounts or their bank statements. And then at one point, it's been several weeks or months, and then they finally realize that there's money missing and uh, finding out where it happened ends up being a bit complicated. And we try to do our best to locate these areas to see if there's evidence like a, either witnesses or a camera that maybe uh, recorded the suspect using your uh, information. But these be, become difficult because sometimes some companies, their re, um, recordings for their cameras are only for a few weeks and uh, they disappear after a few weeks because their systems restart new recordings and they record on top of old stuff. And then we lose the evidence and we cannot get the suspects. So this is a uh, uh, good idea of the types of scams that we see. Uh, of course, the most popular one by phone, and I'm sure you've had it, is that uh, government Canada saying that uh, you're, there's a warrant for your arrest to give a payment for your income unpaid and all this. All scams. And they always change their numbers, okay? These people always change because with the technology, again, as much as it's good for things, it's super uh, useful as well for the criminals. So the criminals now with, it's called VPN and a VPN, what is it, it is? It's a way to hide uh, their phone numbers, to hide their internet uh, addresses of where they're located. And they're able to change their phone numbers and their internet addresses 
and get new ones. They can recycle new ones using that VPN. And uh, they're very difficult to trace after that. And they can call you with one number one day and the next day it's a totally different number or even in the same day. They use different numbers. They recycle it often because they know that it's difficult to trace them and find them to get them. And this is part of the reasons why it's difficult for us, the police, to try to uh, stop this because it's like a never ending story. As long as this technology exists, there's always going to be people that will use it. And as soon as uh, it's accessible to everyone, because all you need to do is you pay a membership to have access to this VPN stuff, then anybody can uh, use it for whatever means they wish to. And uh, we know it's a big problem. It's uh, through talking and doing these types of meetings and sharing information that we're able to, to prevent as many victims as possible. And it's a real challenge because, like I said, when you have victims across the world that uh, can do this, it can be anywhere, anyone, uh, anywhere at any time. So uh, hopefully this can give you some uh, ideas of what to look out for and to be careful. But the real rule of thumb, like I said, when in doubt, you hang up or you flush the email or the messages you get, okay, text message, whatever and never give your money out to strangers that you don't know, okay? You need to see people in person or see your family members in person if you're comfortable to give them money, but never give it without seeing people and without uh, having the opportunity to talk and also always validate with us, call 911 or call us at our police station. I will write down, I think here there's a place that I can send you, uh, where can I type? Is it in the chat? Yeah, I think so here, here. So I'll write the police station number nine. So the number here, it's 514-280. I'll even give you my direct line, okay? So that I'm 514-280-0411. That's my direct line from Mark. So again, I'm gonna also spell you my name. So you see my name. And for the station nine directly, okay, if ever I, I'm off because uh, I have sometimes some breaks that I need uh, to re-energize to get back. This is the number here. The 514-280-0109 is the station direct number where there's always somebody 24 hours, seven days a week, able to answer your questions, okay? So, uh, and if you want, uh, what else? questions, that's the chat. We can take some questions now uh because this concludes my presentation on uh, what to look out for and uh, all questions are good questions and uh i'm a, i'm i'm really like your 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 good hearted uh, person that's just here to help you and on top of it i love the elderly community i'm i'm in charge of already it here it's called epam so it's a french acronym and EPAM means that we're in charge uh, to prevent uh, elderly abuse and uh, mistreatment. It could be psychological, it could be physical, it could be crimes that are committed against you. Anything that you need help for or you want advice for, that's me, that's my role, it's Mark, okay? So you can call me anytime you want. It'll be my pleasure. And uh, I'll, if you want me to meet you when we talk to each other on the phone, I can even uh, as much as possible if you want to meet you as well at your house in person, if you prefer to, then just dealing together on the phone. We'll be comfortable. You do as you wish. I just want you to know that I'm a good resource of help for you for anything you want.
And even if I cannot provide a service, I'll do, do my best to find something that can help you or a good community partner that can work uh, in tandem uh, to give you a good uh, service, okay? If it's for food, it could be for anything. It could be for tips, prevention, how to uh, have uh, more safety. If it's for hearing aids, uh, anything, anything related to your life or your quality of life, I will do my best to find what's good to help you, okay? So, questions, let's see. With dementia, I have no... Yes, here, so the first question. So here, people with dementia are more gullible and trust more. How do we deal with this? So like I said, if you do not see someone that you know that's a family member that's asking for your money or you don't know the person and everything is strangers, never answer strangers. It's the simplest thing we can say. And another thing I had given the Alzheimer's book uh, some magnets with uh, valuable information with phone numbers and fraud tips, as well as it, it looks kind of like a bookmark. And I would suggest for, for you to go at the Alzheimer's group to get some of this and keep it on your fridge. And for this kind of a bookmark to like tape it, you know, to like tape it here on your phone, you know, on your phone line. Like here, you can put it here, you tape it so that when people, you know, you always see it, you're able to, to notice it. You could also maybe tape it on your phone screen if you have a phone screen too, and on your computer screen somewhere and on your fridge, you know, just to have some reminders around you that will constantly be there on the appliances that you use that they might try to fraud you, okay? Uh, and for the trusting people, well, you can only trust, you know, people that you know. So as soon as it's a stranger, do not listen to their stories and don't don't believe them. I think this one. Okay, I think this one. Okay. All right. So uh, thank you for this helpful information. I don't see. Yes. Okay. So now, uh, so I'll retype my contact information. So my name is Mark Bertlin. Community officer. Okay. Position number nine. I cover Colt St. Luke. Homestead. Montreal West. As well as NDG. This is my territory. And my number is 514-280-4411. So here you go. Let me know if that answer popped out. I can't really. OK, here, yeah, I think I can see my answer now. Sorry, guys, I'm uh, bear with me. I'm also not super used to these Zoom things. I'm used to doing them in person. And if ever in, in the future uh, you prefer in person, it'll be my pleasure anytime. Thank you. Yeah, okay, here I see my name. There you go. Yeah, so my contact is there for this one. Okay. Okay. Good. So was there only two questions? Am I seeing correctly or? Oh wait, I think there's yeah. there's two more, right? I think. Mm -hmm. Okay, so far, okay. I, I, okay, now we have a question. I was concerned about the uh, prime candidate for theft is my social security card. Can you comment on this, please? I'm trying to understand the question. You're saying a prime candidate well, anybody uh, that is elderly is a, a prime candidate, okay? That's why we're taking the time to talk today and do the best to give you some uh, warning signs. 
And because as soon as we become older, we are a bit more vulnerable. We seem to trust more people. We seem to, you know, uh, have faith a lot in everyone. But criminals do exist. There are bad guys out there. They're going to act super nice because they're going to deceive you. They're going to lie to you. And they'll say any story in the book. Because at the end of the day, they just want your money. And they don't care if you suffer after. They don't care if you have money issues and finance issues after. Because at that moment, their only objective is to uh, uh, get your emotions, get your attention, get your uh, sympathy from them. And then from there, they can do what they want. So make sure you just don't give it to strangers or anybody you don't know. And like I said, always, let's say the bank calls you or the government calls you, okay? They're never do it by phone. You can go at, the, at your bank office, okay? If it's RBC or whatever, you go there and you ask questions and you talk to them there and they'll be able to tell you, you know, if it's legitimate or not. But again, rule of thumb, you do it in person. All bank transactions, go do it at your bank in person. And any uh, government things that need to be done, you go to Service Canada in person in the offices, okay? It's the best way to conduct your business to uh, prevent you from uh, uh, being a victim example, in this case of your social security card, okay? This information you never give out. You never, never give out by phone or to strangers. You only give it in if you go to your bank and they ask you at your bank or you know, for a job, things like this. But again, make sure you know the people that you do handle it. Don't just give it out. Uh, I service, okay, another question. I service seniors in the Montérégie uh, West area. Do you have a resource who does the same work as you in this area? 100%, exactly. So I do have this district that I take care of, okay? But there are other uh, people like me. If ever uh, you're looking to figure out who they are, so it depends on your city. I know, example, my family, they live in El Perro. I have relatives in Hudson. I have relatives in Pencor, in the Vaudreuil-Soulange territory, it's called. And there, it's La Sûreté du Québec, okay? So it's the SQ police, the provincial police. And how it works is you can contact the police station of the city you're in, and you ask them for a community resource officer or a sociocom, okay? So here I'm gonna write, to type the answer. Sociocom is the French for socio communautaire, okay? That's for French. And for English, it's community resource officer. For the English, okay? So here I'm gonna send you out. So you asked for uh, one of the, these people, an example for my family, that's what I tell them. I tell them, call uh, the provincial SQ police that's at Vaudreuil, because us for the Vaudreuil Soulange, it's in Vaudreuil, the Rion. So they, they call them and they have somebody like me there that's able to help you. Uh, let's say you live on, uh, on the South Shore and you live in the city of um, uh, Roussillon, uh, Delson, Saint Catherine, uh, all these types of little cities. Well, you call the police service there, that's Roussillon. And they have people like us that can help you for this as well. So every single police station is supposed to have one. And if you cannot find one, hit me up with my details that I gave you, and I will help you for that. Uh, can you give us referrals? Okay, so another question. Can you give us referrals for West Island? Can these presentations be made at our libraries? So 100%, okay? So all this can be done anywhere you want, libraries, in any city. If you're in Point Claire, so there it's station number five. Uh, so it's, again, people like me that work there that will do the presentations for you. All you need to do is call at the station and you ask them that you would like to 
be in contact with the person in order uh, to set it up, okay? And uh, of course, it can be done. Uh, uh, merci, excellent. Thank you, uh, thank you. It's my pleasure, Laura, it's my pleasure. <laughs> I think there's a question uh, of the about like uh, investment scams. Yes, yes, I see it. Okay, yes. So here we have a question. Can you talk about investment and romance scams? How do how to help people with dementia? Then okay. So again, it's always the same thing, right? Make sure that you uh, put the sticker on the phone or on your phone screen, on your uh, computer screen to remind you of it. On your fridge so i would highly suggest you either come to our police station or go see the alzheimer's group uh because they have these that they can give to you it's all free and it will help you remind you if you get these phone or, or uh scams there uh, to keep uh, that in mind there that if you, you see it visually it could maybe remind you to that but of course it's a big challenge because you know it's like somebody that breaks a leg right and would like to run. It's kind of hard to run when you have a broken leg, you know, it's not always easy. So that's why we're trying to, to tell you to just keep these uh, little tips, uh, glue them or tape them somewhere that you will help you always have an eye on it, you know. Maybe it could be on your door. Uh, you could put it on your door as well. You could put it, uh, you know, uh, tape it on the counter or anywhere just to have a, a visual to, to see it, okay? It might help you remember. Now for investments and romance scams. See, there's so many that I forgot to cover these ones. But yes, these do exist, okay? So investments, you're gonna get, uh, again, either by phone, text messages, or emails. And it's always often related to uh, cryptocurrency, okay? So it was very popular, this. So it's people that want you to invest in a, its internet currency. It's called crypto money. It's not real money. So right there, it's not normal. Never entertain these things, okay? Right away, this is a scam. Even if there is somebody that's legit that would try to do this, this is so bad. It's, it's not a good investment. And if you're a bit knowledgeable of investments, the cryptocurrency market is plummeting down because it, it can't work in a society where physical money is a way to go. It's so easy to lie about money with crypto money and to create fake money through this system that that's why it's not a valuable thing that works in society. Okay, so just make sure that anything crypto related for investments, you do not you flush it, you block it, don't, don't do that, okay? Uh, also, there was this poor lady that was actually a victim that I met the other day. She, her, what happened was um, uh, her investments, okay? She decided to participate in like this um, kind of like, um, uh, how's it called? Uh, it's, it's like uh, you own a condo or it's um, uh, it's like down south in Florida or any country or warm country where they want you to invest in, oh yeah, time sharing, that's it. So time sharing is the term. So these time sharings, they try to get you to invest, the, to the pay X amount of money to have a condo that uh, people can use or you can use whenever you want. So this again, it's all done that you cannot meet people, you cannot see them in person. All these telephone things, again, by emails, never invest, okay? Never do it, never do so. Make sure that you go to the bank and there's ways for you to either uh, talk to us to double confirm Okay, don't don't do this. You're just gonna lose your money, and this is actually pretty important. Okay, you need to know that even on the opportunities that we're able to arrest people, there's something called I just know it in French. It's called un paradis fiscal. Okay, 
these, uh, uh, we'll say, financial paradises is certain banks in certain countries in the world will never have agreements with the police to empty the accounts after they commit a crime. It's bank accounts that are confidential and protected by certain countries. And all these fraudsters know about these countries and all their bank accounts are in these countries. So once they steal your money, they deposit it directly into these uh, paradis fiscal banks. And it's impossible with us, even with our uh, warrants and uh, to, to get the money and they're gone. So you take, you lose your money and it's impossible to get it back. And the, the judge, the way it works is they only give a sentence for the crime that's committed. And within the sentence, it's jail time because that's how the criminal system works is you can do some therapy in jail. You can uh, do some community work through jail and you have jail time that you need to serve. But once that's done, it's over. They cannot ask them to give money back. And technically the only legal way to get your money would be to sue them for the money they took away from you. But forget it, I, like I'm telling you with these criminals, they're all in banks and you'll never get it back. It's, it's sad, but this is the reality, okay? And to talk about the romance scams. So these romance scams, again, it's gonna be people that will try to be super friendly. They're gonna wanna, you know, uh, give you a bouquet of flowers. They wanna take you out to restaurants. They're gonna wanna buy things for you. They're gonna wanna show that they love you and take care of you. And you know, you mean the world to them. They're gonna say nice words and they're gonna call you love and dear and you know, sweetie and sweetheart and all these things. But again, they're all lying just in order to get access to your finances and your money. So you have to be careful of these uh, scams, especially if it's all people way younger, okay? So if it's people around your age, of age, it's, it's, it, sometimes it might happen, but it's very, very rare. But well, usually we see this with younger crowds. So if you see people who are younger than you, okay, this isn't uh, normal, okay? They're just there wanting to either abuse of your money while you're alive or that when you die to make sure that you put your will to them and just to abuse of that, okay? So all of these uh, things that we hear about elderly people matching with younger people, it's only for your money, okay? They're pretending to be there for you. Don't do anything again, lie to deceive you and go with your emotions because that always, that's what works is dealing with your emotions and uh, making sure that you feel bad for them or that uh, you think that they're taking good care of you all in an abuse, okay, to abuse of you. So just keep an eye out for that, it does exist. On social security card, I was told that if the scammers can get this card, they have access to your, yes, exactly, yeah. So social security card, okay? We only have one of these in our lifetime, okay? There's the government, you're born, it's the same thing with your birth certificate. You have a birth certificate and you have a social security card, okay? There's no way to get a, a brand new birth certificate and there's no way to change your social security card. You have it, it belongs to you, and it follows you everywhere. So if anybody has that number, yeah, they can use it and pretend to be you. And then it becomes identity fraud, okay? Because then they can pretend that they're you, and then they can purchase a car or try to invest in things, uh, buy a house. And it's I've actually been a victim of this uh, in the past. So even cops, you know, we're humans. Everybody, uh, uh, there's no... Um, Nobody that's secured from this. And that's why we exist, the police, to try to prevent this from happening. But me, what happened, it was internet. I didn't, oh yeah, that's another thing that we should cover quickly. Purchasing online. So what I ended up finding out through investigation was that how they got my information um, uh, was uh, through internet purchasing online. So again, I'm gonna to try to see if I can get it. So here, 
So C here, C. Uh, see here see the little uh yeah i think it's too too close for us it's it's not it's not focusing well okay yeah. see here there's like a lock see here yeah the lock this means it's secure so whatever you're doing on your internet website is locked and secured okay so there's sometimes when um, it's unlocked, you're gonna see here the little loop is gonna be undone. That means that it's not secure and it means that anybody can have access to your page, anyone, okay? So me, that's what happened to me. I somehow made a purchase on a moment where it wasn't locked. So what that means is that the site is unsafe and you do not make purchases, okay? Or else people can have access to your card information. And that's what happened to me. They had my uh, card details through that and were making transactions and pretending to be me. So just uh, make sure that you be careful with your online purchasing. And often what I say is buy an antivirus. So if you go to Walmart or Best Buy or any store, computer store that can send you an antivirus and mal malware protection it's called okay so i'm gonna type that as well here antivirus and malware protection okay so there you go so that what it does okay when we go to the store they'll they'll uh be able to get one from them okay and then you install it on your computer and you can also some of them nowadays also install them on your phone and it'll be able to help you protect at some level which is pretty good i would say it's about a good 90 percent pretty good okay it's not perfect but it's way better than nothing so i do recommend you still use that but they have so many clever ways now. Like I say, it's a constant evolution. You just have to, like I said, keep an eye on for the strangers and the people you cannot see all the time. Uh, be alert. Here I have another question. Thanks for your presentation. Of course, it's my pleasure. I'm glad to be here. Uh, does your district include a Côte de Neige? So no, so my district uh, doesn't. But your district is station number 26, okay? So their, their number, technically, there's for sure one that has the number 3001 uh, okay? Send, okay? Uh, let's see if I see that. Yeah, okay. So yeah, so it would be station 26, okay, for Code de Neige. And the number for this uh, community resource officer that's like me, it would be the one here that I put, 514-300-0426, if you have questions or you wanna to talk to them. Uh, okay, that one's answered, okay. okay i think there's one left so far so if you have more questions uh no worries uh hit me up yeah. okay this one i think it's important to educate the caregivers as they can keep an eye out for the fact absolutely yeah absolutely uh the caregivers uh, they do have a training from the CLSC, okay? We work uh, not hand in hand, but we do do partnerships quite often with them. So I was able to understand what they do, okay? So them, as soon as there's elder, elderly abuse signs, either physically because they see bruises on you or uh, they see some signs of indication, they contact 911. They know that it, they have to call us at 911. 
uh, so they're supposed to be doing that. Yeah, they should be. And um, sometimes it's it's sad there, but it, sometimes some caregivers do uh, commit crimes and become a, a suspect, okay? Because they do sometimes see a vulnerability in some elderly people and they do try to uh, fraud you or commit crimes towards you. And if that's the case, you uh, you call us, okay? Call 911. Uh, and if you want to talk... Uh, uh, to uh, us, you can as well. But the only problem is it's going to be hard for me to solve a problem if you don't press charges, okay? If you're a victim of a crime, you have to first off press charges, which means you call 911 so that either police vehicle meets you to write a report or you come to the police station and we write the report. And then once it's official that legally uh, you, you want that person to be arrested, then my services can be available to uh, to uh, like ch uh, change the caregiver and you know get new people involved to help you and uh, give you some tips because me I can only give tips I cannot stop them from committing the crime okay because I just do prevention but my colleagues do the arrests so we work together but you have to start off by making a complaint and then from there I'll be able to to give a more uh, profound help. Okay, uh, here, uh, live in La Salle. Okay, that's, I used to work in La Salle. That was one of the, uh, station 13 is for you. So live in La Salle. Do you give presentations in RPAs? Thank you. Yes, so RPAs, I know in French, c'est les résidences uh, privées âgées. So the private uh, residences for the elderly people. So yes, yes, we can. But I've never so far had a demand for it, and uh, it's it's has to. They technically need to ask us if they want it, and if you suggest uh, us to have it, you have to talk to them first, since they're a private company. So their premises uh, would need our, their authorization for us to come in, because since it's private, I cannot just show up. I would need them to ask for me or else they can refuse my presence. Let's say I just show up without their invitation. They can tell me to leave and I have to leave legally because it's their private property, okay? So that's how it works for the RPAs. And often, usually they're pretty well equipped, you know, because uh, they're expensive and uh, they have a lot of services they provide. Uh, but I am also aware it's an issue. There are uh, elderly people victim of them. Okay, and uh, but don't hesitate to press charges because if you don't and you live in an RPA, we'll never know about it if you don't press charges because they try to keep it private. You know, uh, that's a good thing about private, right? Again, is that if you pay a lot of money, you'll get more services, you'll get more help. But if you end up getting a, a caregiver that's a, a criminal and that's deceiving or people that work at the RPA that's deceiving, don't hesitate there to ask us for help because we can still do an investigation and then arrest these people and uh, find uh, solutions for you, okay? Sometimes we might feel trapped by the RPAs, but in general, again, they're very good, they're very good, but I am conscious that there are criminals there too, you know, that want to take advantage of you. And that's when you contact 911 or you can call me and uh, the social commons uh, station 11 would be for La Salle. And it will be our pleasure to, to give you some help. And I'll give you that number there for station 13. Uh, type an answer, okay. So for you will be station number 13, okay. 514, him it's 280 -0413. So it's often you'll see the recurring theme. So every single station on the island of Montreal is always 514-280, okay, all the time. And then for the rest, the zero is always the zero, okay? But after that, it's, it changes, but the last numbers is always the station number. So it's always uh, zero one to contact the station or 04 to contact a community resource officer. 
And then at the, the last two digits is always the station. So for example, me, I'm at station uh, nine. It should be zero nine, but since we're three people, there is somebody at zero nine, at zero four zero nine. But me, I'm zero four eleven because we needed several lines. So we created another line to have access to me. So for La Salle, it's zero thirteen. And there are two community there. So the second guy would have another line, but for sure there's somebody at 013. And it's the same thing for 26, you know, 0, uh, 0426, et cetera, et cetera, okay? But uh, you also can go on the SPVM website. Here, I'll also type it. Okay, and there you'll be able to have access by uh, looking around for our station information and you'll have every single station you want, anyone you need. I think that's it. Was that it for the questions? I think that's it for the questions, uh, Officer Bethiam. Thank you very much for your um, the information that you've given us. It is definitely very helpful. Um, and I think it will give us like, you know, those flags when we're, you know, when yes. we encounter this different scenario. So thank yes. you very much for your time. Yes. And for those of you who are asking about uh, how to help people with dementia, knowing all of this, please uh, don't hesitate to call us here at AGI. Each people have different um, situation. So I believe that the approach should also be uh, unique to your situation. So uh, you can give us a call at 514-485-7233 and we could really explore um, different um, uh, approaches for that because we have to take into consideration your family's cognitive uh, um, capabilities as well. So uh, there's no one answer that could like that would fit all of your situation. So we want to take the tailored approach on that. So please feel free to call us. Again, thank you very much for coming into this talk. Again, Officer yes. Bethiom, thank you very much and have a lovely day. It's our thank pleasure. You. And uh, Alzheimer's group are fantastic guys. I'm telling you, we're a partnership with them. We work together. We were as well together at the Cavendish Mall on the International Elderly Awareness uh, Day. And uh, the, we love them. They're going to be there for you as well. And uh, don't be afraid, okay? We're there for you. Thank you. Have, Have a, a good, good day, day everyone. Bye-bye.